this is Maggie. Since new moon in Aquarius, I thought I would look for an Aquarian of the month. Um, instead, I came up with Galileo. He, you know, he was born over 400 years ago in the 1500s. So some have him down as an Aquarian, some have him down as Pisces. Um, however, he's the father of modern science. He's a physicist. He invented the telescope. He uh, found the four outer rings of, uh, was it Saturn? Yeah, Europa, Callisto, Mead, and Colony or something. Um, kinetics, analytical dynamics, telescopes, and heliocentrism. That's back in the day, they believed in um, the Earth revolved around the sun, Copernicus. Yeah, so, you know, he, Going into his chart, you know, in his 12th house, he has both Saturn and Saturn restriction um, and Jupiter, 29 degrees. So he did spend some time. He was persecuted as a heretic through the Inqu Inquisition twice by the Catholic Church um, for heresy. However, they really didn't get him on anything. <laughs> um, yeah, for his beliefs, for his beliefs, they labeled him a heretic, but he was a great astrologer. You know, he worked for the queens and royalty and everybody, but um, so luckily the charges didn't hold, but he, he may have been in prison for a little time. And the reason I'm stating that is because the 12th house can be hospitals and institutions and solitary confinement and Saturn being in the 12th house would denote that. Um, so anyway, Galileo was born uh, February 16th, 1564 in the Julian calendar, Pisa, Italy. Uh, the time, the, the, the time Astrid has is 341 p.m. LMT. Um, universal time is 1459. So it has his ascendant as Leo fixed Leo on um, fire and his his son his moon in Taurus you know I don't know if we know his exact moon but anyway it's five degrees Taurus um, making him very practical um, earthy it's fixed earth so his belief systems were, were very fixed and he had to overturn a lot of beliefs um, and his ascendant was Leo. Oh, I'm sorry. His son is Pisces. His son is Pisces. He has a loaded Pisces house. Totally loaded Pisces house. Um, yeah. And so I'm just going to jump to it. I'm just, I've am just i got to jump to his Pisces house. So his ascendant is fiery Leo. There are no planets in it. However, he does have its intercepted house with, with Cancer in the 12th house, and he does have both Jupiter, the ruler of Pisces, and Saturn um, restriction in separation and loss in uh, the 12th house of watery cancer, the home. So uh, I'll get back to that later. So anyway, jumping to his son, he has four planets in Pisces, so he's extremely intuitive. Um, you know, he's a physicist, a physicist, and he was an astrologer as well, but he has the sun, seven degrees Pisces, Pluto, Pluto's the ruler of Scorpio, and talk about depth and mystery and intrigue and just being able to see, he probably saw visions, seriously, with, um, Pluto and plus Mercury, planet of, you know, his thinking and his imagination, his communication, and Venus, he was very, very gifted. And those are all in the eighth house of Scorpio. So he has the ruler of Scorpio, the sun, communication on extremely, he has so much depth. I mean, the father of modern science, yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's uh, 
kinetics, analytical dynamics, telescopes, heliocentrism. I mean, that is some depth right there. So that, that's Sun Pluto in the eighth house of Scorpio. They love mystery and they love to dig for the truth. And so that would give him extreme, extreme intuition, psychic ability, analytical skills, able to communicate them to our day, you know, I mean, across the centuries. And, uh, and Venus's attraction. And so he, he would be able to read, you know, visions far into the future, uh, you know, read physics, read mathematical formulas, read astrology charts, you, you know. Yeah, he, he's, he's a true, true Pisces. Um, Yeah, in the eighth house. So I was looking for Aquarius, but he, you know, he has Aquarius on the seventh house, but his son is seven degrees um, Pisces. So it just went in. So getting to his chart, uh, pretty much he's got that, that stellium in, in Pisces, and they're very interesting formation. He's got some serious geometry going on. Um, so the moon, Mars, Mars and Neptune are in, in his midheaven, along with his moon. His moon is in Taurus. Um, that would be your career, you know. His 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 career was the material world, you know, and and that. not only the physical world but the ethereal world, world as well, and you know, just belief systems and inventions. Everything is pointing to Uranus, you know. The ruler of inventions and belief systems because Uranus is in Sagittarius, that's belief systems, law, teaching, higher law, higher philosophy, theology. So he has that in Sagittarius. So he was trying he was trying to overturn not overturn, he just discovered the truth. I mean, Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter and that is the truth. So he struggled with a lot of opposition. I mean, with the Inquisition after him, labeling him a heretic, because they all thought it was a flat earth and everything revolved around the, the earth. And he's heliocentric. And so he has a lot of squares, a lot of squares. And he, you know, between his, his stellium in Pisces, the four planets in Pisces, and his sun, and they are all pretty much in conjunction and they're squaring Uranus. So he, yeah, he, he put he put his belief systems across, but he, you know, really um, had to struggle to, to, uh, he, to <laughs> yeah, he really had to struggle. And, you know, his Saturn in the 12th shows that and, and all the squares to Uranus. Uranus is sudden, unpredictable change, and it's the father of invention. I mean, Uranus is rules electronics, it rules astrology, it rules the tel telescope, anything scientific. And this guy, you know, Galileo, you know, is the top scientist in the world, you know. I mean, Copernicus, uh, yeah, and so, and it's very interesting that he was an astrologer and that he discovered the four four moons of Jupiter 400 years ago. Yeah, I mean, that is the stellium in Pisces, for sure, squaring Uranus. So, and, and that Uranus is, is in opposition to Mars and Neptune. Neptune is in Gemini communication. Uh, very receptive communication, and Neptune is the ruler of Pisces. And so he is a Pisces, so he's using his ruler, Neptune, as like a tuning fork for all his ideas and able to communicate those. However, the Mars, you know, the, the Uranus was his inventiveness, his scientific mind, you know. Um, scientific inventions. Aquarians are frequently, 
very scientific and adventurous. Uh, Mars probably got him into trouble for it, uh, but it, it took him far. He's very ambitious. And uh, so materially, you know, he, he did work for royalty. That would be that would be the moon and Mars in Taurus. Mars is 29 degrees Taurus, so he he was paid for his work, I'm sure, you know, and, and had some material assets if he was drawing up there, you know. Hopefully he was paid for his inventions, but I think he endured a lot of conflict over it. Yeah, of course he did, you know, the Inquisition after him. Um, yeah, because he's, um, okay, I'm just going to focus on his Uranus right now. He's, uh, yeah, he's got some serious conjuncts going on too. Um, and they're all to Uranus. And they're to the 12th house. So you know, all his Pisces stellium in, in the 8th house of Scorpio. That's a water house. A bunch of water planets in a water house. Um, in conjunct Saturn in, in uh in 12th house Pisces in Cancer. So they're in trine. They're in trine, but his Pluto is in conjunct to um, looks like Saturn and Jupiter. So that that was the imprisonment that he you know had to endure, or at least you know people the hardships that he had to endure. Um, but at the same time, he has a beautiful trine. A beautiful trine between all his stellium in Pisces in 8th house square, watery Scorpio to Cancer, Saturn in Cancer. So Saturn, again, would give him extreme depth of intuition. His Jupiter, 29 degrees Cancer. That's a critical degree. And so he has like uh, six planets, no more than that. Yeah, six planets of water, more than... Kirk Cobain. I, I always bring him up. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're just like totally on different levels. He's like out in the stars. Um, yeah, so he's a visionary. He's truly, truly a visionary, just psychic, intuitive, made probably clairvoyant, probably saw visions and just saw, probably saw his scientific, everything he discovered. Um, he may have had visions, you know, because he was so psychic, having having all his planets nearly in water houses. Um, the moon grounded him a little bit, the moon in Taurus. Um, in Earth, he has the North Node and Chiron in Capricorn. That's his achievement. It's in the, 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 uh, sixth, house, the sixth house of work uh, in Capricorn. Fifth and sixth house. Yeah, Chiron's in the uh, wounded healer, is in the sixth house, and the north node is, is in Capricorn, and it's in the fifth, five degrees. So he was meant to achieve and discover, but he had to endure, you know, a lot of wounding in the process, you know, being prosecuted uh, for his belief system. And Uranus is just change, changeability, so, yeah, changeability and scientific thinking as well. It's a ruler of Aquarius, so he has trines to Uranus. Uranus basically is the only thing down on the IC, you know, on the lower hemisphere of his chart. He, he has, and everything is kind of pointing to it. He has Uranus trining. The water house, 12th, 12th house uh, cancer. And he has Uranus squaring all his stellium in Pisces, 8th house, uh, four planets. Huh. And yeah, his home, his home, 4th house is Scorpio, but Uranus is in Sagittarius. So his, his, he, he fought hard, I believe, for his belief systems. And Sagittarius is forward-thinking, visionary belief systems. So he, 
He's trying to, he discovered the truth um, through Neptune. You know, see, he was able to see beyond the veil. That's the way I kind of see his Neptune and Gemini squaring everything in, in Pisces. So he got in some trouble, I think, for his beliefs. But, and he was, let's just say he was challenged because a square is a 90 degree, very challenging aspect. And he's got squares to Mars. So, yeah, he's got squares to Mars. And let me check. He's got a square, Pluto square Neptune. Yeah, Pluto square Neptune. Yeah, so he, you know, he had to fight for his, not, not fight so much, just put him out there and if people fought him. And there was struggle, struggle, struggle. But, uh, yeah, very, very interesting, interesting chart. So he has a lot of Earth. He has the North Node in Chiron and Capricorn. That's achievement, both in, in his lifetime and in you know, his gifts to the universe, actually, you know, um, the whole universe, not only Earth, I'm sure. Um, discovering the, the four rings of Saturn, yeah. The Saturn? Four of Jupiter, I've got, oh, Jupiter moon. He discovered four Jupiter moons. And the four rings of Saturn. So this, you know, yeah, with it and the telescope, so. It's just really, and I admire physicists, and of course he, he was an astrologer, and they, you know, everybody was back in the day, but the Inquisition, I think, tried to kill that. But, um, so his Earth is Moon, Mars, and the MC up in um, Taurus and Gemini, so he was able to communicate that. Um, materially, he probably may have made some money, but they're in opposition. His moon is in conjunct. His moon is in conjunct to Uranus. That means it's kind of like hidden from it's one over from the whole wheel, and it's hidden from his view. So he 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 had no clue that his his inventions and his ideas would would get him in, in, you know, overturn the whole, whole uh, theory of the world. <laughs> I mean, he, yeah, he, but that's what he was born to do. He was born to do that. So he overturned the whole world theory. Um, and was persecuted for it. You know, through all these squares and oppositions to Uranus. And so anyway, I was talking about the moon in conjunct Uranus. So emotionally, I'm sure that was really hard for him. Uranus is sudden unexpected changes and just, you know, very scientific mind. And so he was trying to, you know, put... Well, he did discover things, and he, you know, he, he made money on it, but he, he couldn't see the future. He couldn't see the Uranus, uh, all the conflict that was coming at him through, through his inventions, you know, through his belief systems. And, he has so many, he has a lot of squares, a lot of squares. This is not an easy chart, not easy being him. And especially a Pisces, you know, being so sensitive as it is, having two planets in Cancer, 12th house, you know, that could be imprisonment and also is a visionary. And four planets plus, you know, the ruler in Scorpio's house in Pisces, I mean, yeah, it's just he had to be almost mediumistic. He probably visually saw the rings and the moons, you know. I mean, sure, the telescope helped, but he had this incredible psychic intuition about him. I mean, yeah, it's just, uh, so his moon is square. Uh, his, his moon is square of Saturn as well. 
So that's that's conflict between his you know his unconscious and maybe the imprisonment. And the moon was his emotional. You know, he put everything into his his work and um, was persecuted for his belief system. So his belief system is. What I'm trying to get to is his belief system is his Uranus and Sagittarius. So we want to look for his Jupiter because that's the ruler of Sagittarius. And that's in the 12th house. Um, so that's enhancing. It certainly enhanced his psychic abilities, and his visionary intuitive abilities, but at the same time, it expanded. Jupiter's 29 degrees, 12th, 12th house, it's critical degree, it's right on the cusp. So it expanded uh, his psychic abilities, but then Saturn, you know, the great teacher and the disciplinarian, and it can cause separation, restriction, and hardship. So, at the, you know, at the same time as being so gifted and, you know, such a genius and, you know, the father of modern science and kinetics and analytical dynamics and, you know, heliocentrism, um, he was persecuted for it. So, it's so funny. I mean, it's not even funny. They're bringing back the flat earth. Yeah, so a lot of people are into the flat earth. So that would just overturn everything he did, he, he did you know? But that's, yeah, that's just... Uh, some people's belief systems that Galileo fought very hard <laughs> to, to achieve. Not only, he, he, he wasn't out to fight hard, he just was, saw the truth. He saw the truth, you know, with Jupiter in the 12th house, he, he just visually saw it. And with all, of, all the planets, the benefics, you know, he had the benefics, both Venus and Pisces, Eighth house and Jupiter in in water, twelfth house. So the benefics really helped him to see it, and Pluto gave him great depth. And Mercury, he had to communicate about it, you know. And yeah, so he so he struggled, you know, because of his belief system um, and the opposition. I already talked about to his midheaven is from Uranus. The squares are all pointing to Uranus and the trine is pointing to Uranus. So it's a very interesting formation. And his fire is the ascendant Leo, very strong, passionate about, you know, just uh, his personality. He, he must have been a very, very forceful personality <laughs> to do all this. His ascendant, you know, how he was outwardly perceived. You know, maybe people saw his Leo and weren't really seeing, you know, his son. You know, his whole stellium, yeah. So he, you know, he probably was pretty spaced out too. I would think, I would think. But luckily he had the moon and Taurus and Mars to bring him down to Earth, I mean. Yeah, he, his midheaven, the MC, Mars, and the moon, the north node, and Chiron. That's five things he had in Earth. So very grounded. He wasn't spaced out. He was psychic enough to, to be a visionary, but <clears throat> at the same time, he was, you know, he, he was grounded. I mean, he, he, yeah, he overturned the flat earth theory, basically. So the Capricorn and the Taurus definitely helped with that. Because had he been all water, he wouldn't have be, been able to put it across, you know. Um, so that really helped having that on the MC and having the, having his sixth house Capricorn definitely helped him. And the North Node, he was meant to discover, he was meant to discover and creative, <coughs> excuse me, creative beliefs. So I'll just get some water. So his son is sextile the moon. That's an easy flowing harmonious aspect. So he has a lot of trines 
and he has some another sextile between his midheaven and Mars. Well, from Mars and Neptune to to Uranus. So that's Earth and Water. That they're easy flowing, harmonious, sixty degree aspects. So those helped him. The trines helped him. Um, the sextiles to his moon helped him, thank God. Um, they helped him to, to put it across to, you know, people, people, some people listened to him and some didn't, you know. Some were really hot against him. Uh, but, but he was favored. He was favored by royalty. So that's his moon in the MC. Um, and, this, and the sextiles to Pisces. So. He would read all their charts, you know. It's kind of, kind of, kind of cool. Um, so the sextiles definitely helped him to overcome a lot of his difficulties. Um, so he ha and he has that beautiful water trine going. So he had to look to his sex sextiles and his stellium because you want to look to the best parts of your chart, and its struggle is what. The challenges are what make us evolve. I mean, he, his life challenge was to bring, you know, bring evolution to the earth. So he accepted the challenge and uh, he delivered. He delivered. He lived out his north node in Capricorn and his midheaven. So we can thank him for all his gifts to us. And anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. If you do, please like, subscribe, and share. If you would like your chart done by me, um, yeah, just send me an email. It's $45 at this time, and I would be happy to do it. Thank you.